Cross. On the rooftops of a million church buildings, on the flags of nations, and on a thousand logos, a cross can say, I will keep my promise, and a cross can say, I won't. A cross is found where two ways meet. A cross can be your destination. A cross can say, you're in, and a cross can say, you're out. There are times when you're glad to see a cross, and there are times when you're not. A cross can stand for hatred, and a cross can signify love. For some, a cross is filled with superstition, for others, it's just another religious symbol. A cross can be a warning sign, and a cross can be a sign of help. There are crosses that make you smile, crosses for sadness and loss, and crosses for remembrance. A cross can be so many different things. been used to kill. And in this, there is one cross that stands apart. The cross where God's own Son gave his life. This cross is where God showed us his love. Friends. 
Welcome to our Good Friday worship time for 2021 here at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. We're so glad that you're joining us today for this very special day. We call it Good Friday. I don't know how you feel about the term good, especially when we're talking about our Savior going to the cross to be crucified and dies. Uh, I don't know how you feel about the term Good Friday, but uh, for me, it really is good. It, it really is good that Jesus would offer to take our place on the cross, to pay for our sin, to buy our freedom with his very blood shed on the cross. Uh, for me, what summarizes it is actually a comic strip, uh, one of my favorite. I want to share it with you now just briefly. It's a BC comic strip by Johnny Hart. And he, uh, I don't, I think he was a Christian. Uh, he's now since passed, but uh, Johnny Hart writes this Good Friday comic strip. And in the three panels of this comic strip, I'll share them with you now. One of the gentlemen, one of the guys in the, uh, the comic strip says, I hate the term Good Friday. And the other guy goes, why? Well, my Lord was hanged on a tree that day. And then the other gentleman thinks about it and he says, well, if you were going to be hanged on that day and he volunteered to take your place, how would you feel? And he kind of says, good. And then the gentleman says, have a nice day. For me, that totally summarizes in just a few words what we're celebrating on this day and what we're pondering and what we're giving thanks to God for. Today really is good because we remember the day that Jesus took our place on the cross. Uh, so welcome to worship today. Welcome to Good Friday 2021. This is a service of darkness, a tenebrae service, which means we have seven candles lit. And we'll be sharing this year Jesus' seven last words that he spoke from the cross. So we'll have his words that he spoke. We'll have a special reading that goes along with that and then a prayer. And then after that prayer, we'll, we will uh, extinguish each candle one by one until all the candles are extinguished and that darkness signifies the death of our Savior for us. And so uh, welcome to worship and welcome to Good Friday. I invite you to join with me now in a special reading, Isaiah chapter 53, verses four to six, uh, the words are up on the screen for you to read along with me. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let's begin our time with prayer. Lord Jesus, today we remember very clearly that you are the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We thank you and praise you on this day. You pray to the Father for our forgiveness you promised us paradise. You placed us in a loving relationship with each other. You finished all things necessary for our salvation. You committed your spirit to the Father that we may die in peace. We don't just take time to remember today. We, by faith, glory in your cross because it is through the cross that we may overcome every evil and finally gain full and complete victory in your name. Amen. Your blood speaks a better word than all the empty claims I've heard upon this earth speaks righteousness for me stands in my defense Jesus it's your blood your blood speaks a better word than all the empty 
empty claims I've heard upon this earth speaks righteousness for me stands in my defense Jesus it's your blood what can wash away our sins what can make us whole again nothing but the blood nothing but the blood of Jesus what can wash us pure as snow welcomed as the friends of God nothing but your blood nothing but your blood King Jesus cross testifies in grace tells of the father's heart to make a way for us now boldly we approach no earthly confidence it's only by your blood Hi, my name is Dieter, and I'll be sharing with you this morning the first word of Jesus at the cross. The first word comes to us from Luke chapter 23, verse 34. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. The reading that goes along with this scripture lesson is from Psalms 51, the first 14 verses. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from all sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb, and you taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, 
and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence, nor take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, you who are my God and my Savior, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. And the prayer for this first word from the cross. Heavenly Father, we pray to you because you are the God of forgiveness. Your very own son, as he was being crucified, prayed that you would forgive them for what they were doing. Heavenly Father, please include us in that prayer, whether we sin out of ignorance or intention. Be merciful to us and grant us your acceptance and your peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, our suffering Savior. Amen. Hi, my name is Peter, and I'm going to share with you the second of the words that Jesus spoke from the cross. They come from Luke 23, verse 43. He said, today you will be with me in paradise. As well, listen to this reading, which comes from John in the 14th chapter, beginning at verse 1. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Please join me in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to you because you promised to the repentant the joy of paradise. Enable us by the Holy Spirit to repent, to turn from the ways of thinking and speaking and acting that do not reflect your goodness. Lord, we thank you for your grace, like the grace that you showed to the repentant criminal who is being crucified beside you. Amen. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. 
The third word Jesus said, Dear woman, here is your son. Here is your mother. John 19, 26 to 27. The reading comes from Mark 3, 31 to 35. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers, he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Prayer on the third word from the cross. Jesus, we come to you, our Savior. In your hours of greatest suffering, you continue to express compassion for all people, including your mother Mary, and made arrangements for her care. Grant that we who seek to follow your example may show our concern for the needs of others, reaching out to provide for those who suffer in our human family. Lord, you are compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. Thank you for your compassion in Jesus' name. Amen. fourth word from the cross. In Matthew, we hear, Jesus said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then in Psalm, chapter 22, we read, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from my cries of anguish. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In you our ancestors put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried out and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm, not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth, I was cast on you. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Prayer from the fourth word of the cross. Almighty God, your Son took your judgment of human sin and guilt, and placed it on your Son. We are forgiven, because you were forsaken. We are accepted, you were condemned to die. Because of Jesus, Lord, we have the grace now to know and believe that we will never be forsaken. We owe this all to Jesus, who bore our sin on the cross. Because of Jesus, we are never alone. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
Hello, my name is John. The fifth word that Jesus said, I am thirsty. The reading is from John chapter 6, verses 35 through 40. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those who he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, your lips were dry and your throat was parched. You received no relief that day. Lord, we pray for relief and that you would quench our thirst now our thirst for true and lasting joy, meaning, value, and hope in this life. Would you please quench our spiritual thirst by your very own love and mercy that you demonstrated the day you were sacrificed on that cross and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. I would like to share with you now a gospel reading. Uh, it's the reading that's going to help focus us on Peter and his relationship with Jesus. Uh, we'll be watching a video right after this reading, and then we'll get into my message with you. It's Mark chapter 14, verses 66 to 72. It says, While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with that Nazarene Jesus, she said, but he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said, and he went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, this fellow is one of them. Again, he denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, 
Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses on himself, and he swore to them, I don't know this man. I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately the rooster crowed the second time, and then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. They say a rooster crowing is God's wake-up call. Yeah, that's, uh, at least that's the way it was for me. Everything, that, that whole night was a blur, all right? Um, I didn't comprehend, none of us could comprehend everything that was going on, all right? We were all in the upper room, Jesus was washing our feet. Um, then we were in the garden, Jesus goes off to pray by himself. I fell asleep. I'm not proud of it. I had a big meal. Bread makes me sleepy. Next thing we know, me, James, and John, Jesus is in our face, and he's trying to wake us up, and uh, he said, um, what is he? he said, uh, the, the, uh, the flesh is weak, the spirit is willing, and, and then before we know it, Judas is kissing Jesus on the cheek. I try to go help him. I cut off this guard's ear. For the record, I wasn't aiming for his ear. I'm a fisherman, not a swordsman. And then they, uh, they arrest Jesus, and they take him off, and we... We ran. And it wasn't but two hours earlier that we were in the upper room. I was looking at him. I was looking him right in the eye saying, if everyone disowns you, Jesus, I won't. I'm with you. I love you. And I think that's what made me stop, turn around, go back. And uh, I caught a glimpse of Jesus as they were taking him to the high priest's house. I stood at the gate, and some girl comes up to me, starts pointing at me, starts going, you, you're with him. You're with this man that claims to be the son of God. You're one of his disciples. I felt like every eye was on me. So I just brushed her off. I said, you don't know what you're talking about. You got the wrong guy. I get my way into the courtyard, and uh, it's cold. I, I try to warm up by the fire. And then there's this guy that recognizes me, and he is uh, from the ear incident, you know, and starts going, get him, get him, he's with him. Just arrest him, get him. And I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about, all right? I wasn't with him. It was easier the second time to deny him. It was some time right before morning, and um, this wise guy, he comes up to me and goes, who are you kidding, all right? Who are you fooling? You're with him. I can tell by your accent. I'm like, this is just the way I talk, all right? And, and the whole night, they kept pushing him around. They kept beating him. They kept spitting on him, throwing insults at him, and I couldn't take it anymore. I had enough. I was tired of people accusing me, looking at me, and I, and I just I said a few things that I'm not proud of, but I was like, leave him alone. You don't know what you're doing, all right? Just leave him alone. I wasn't with him. And that's when I heard the most blood-curdling sound I ever heard in my whole life. I heard that rooster crow. And at that moment, Jesus, he turns around and he looks at me. He looks at me. And his gaze, you can't escape his gaze. I mean, when his eyes are on you, you cannot escape it. And they arrested him and they took him off. I will die with you, Jesus. If, everyone, if everybody disowns you, I will die with you. What a, what a joke. I mean, what would you do? At that moment, at that time, I ran. I ran so fast, I ran so long. And you know what they did? They killed him. He 
He's dead. Welcome to Good Friday's message uh, for 2021. And we're calling this one, It Feels Like We Lost. It Feels Like We Lost. And as we get into the message, I want to play for you a sound effect, okay? I want you to see if you can figure out what this is and you can tell me if you like this sound or not, okay? Here it is. All right, so can you tell me what that sound was? Could you tell what it was? It's the sound of Velcro, the sound of two pieces of Velcro being pulled apart. Do you like that sound? Some people don't like that sound. I, I, I don't mind that sound at all, uh, but some uh, kind of gives them the shivers. Uh, are there any other sounds that you wouldn't want to necessarily hear that are uncomfortable for you to hear you don't necessarily appreciate those sounds like I don't know the screeching of tires in your back alley or maybe the sound of wind whistling through a small opening in a window or a doorway that kind of sound that howling sound or maybe uh, a dentist drill maybe you don't like that sound or a fire truck horn as the fire trucks trying to get through an intersection and when they blow that horn I mean, that is one of the most stressful sounds I've ever heard. Uh, how about fingernails on a chalkboard? I brought one with me so I could demonstrate. No, I didn't do that. I wouldn't want to inflict that sound on you. I know it drives some people just crazy. Um, and then, you know, there's the sound that uh, for me is probably one of the most uncomfortable sounds to hear. It's the sound of a smoke alarm, smoke detector in my home when it goes off. Uh, nothing's worse than hearing that sound. Well, and it's not necessarily the sound uh, that bothers me so much. It's the feelings uh, that go along with it. It's, and, and for some of us, it's the memories of, uh, of those feelings, uh, depending on what we're hearing. So, for example, if you've ever been in a car accident and then you hear the sound of screeching tires any time after that, how do you feel? How do you feel? Well, what do you do? You tighten up, you clench your teeth, you... You react physically to the sound because there's a memory attached to that particular sound. It was no different for Peter, one of Jesus' closest followers. This is 2,000 years ago, keep in mind. Our Lord and Savior who lived, breathed, walked this earth 2,000 years ago. One of his closest followers, Peter, you know, uh, same went for him because... Any time he would hear a rooster crow, it had to have brought up some feelings about what happened on the night Peter betrayed his Lord. Uh, normally, what is the sound of a rooster? Uh, it is the sound of, it's kind of a signal, right? To get up. It's morning. It's, it's a new beginning. Morning has arrived. It's nature's alarm clock. The rooster crowing in the morning has forever been a signal of new beginnings. But for Peter, for the rest of his life, whenever he would hear that sound, it would bring back the feeling of that night. you got to think, how could it not? That sound, those feelings, it's imprinted, it's almost like it's hardwired. Even after everything turned out okay for Peter, even after Peter sees Jesus alive again after he was crucified, even after... He went out to minister and to spark new growth in the Christian church 2,000 years ago by sharing good news. Every morning would potentially be waking up to that sound and that feeling and that memory, that cruel reminder of how Peter turned his back on his Lord and Savior Jesus. You know, uh, we love Peter. You know, if we were casting 
for a movie, Peter would be that best friend to the hero in the story. The one you really like, you know, that movie where the sidekick, you really like him because of things he does and says, you know, he would be usually interjecting with a funny line or, you know, he never quite gets it the way the hero gets it and he knows it and Jesus knows it. We know Peter. We know Peter so well because we, Peter's the guy who stepped out of the boat that time to walk on water with Jesus. We know Peter as the one who drew the sword and cut off that soldier's ear. I mean, on the night in which Jesus was betrayed and he was arrested and handed over to authorities, like Peter was in for a fight. He was ready for a battle. Peter's that guy who had his mother-in-law who was sick and Peter was not shy in the least to ask Jesus for a favor. Like, could you please heal my mother-in-law? Like, who wouldn't want a son-in-law like that? Uh, we love Peter because he's a natural-born leader. Peter was enthusiastic. He was strong-willed. He was impulsive and at times brash. And most significantly, we remember Peter because he was the first of the disciples to confess. Jesus, you are the Christ. You are the Son of the living God. A truth which Jesus says was divinely revealed to Peter. He had a great faith, even though his behavior wasn't always great. You know what I mean? We know Peter because we all have a friend like him. Or maybe you are that friend. Judas, on the other hand, another of uh, follower of Jesus 2,000 years ago, who also turned his back on his Lord. Judas, we don't like talking about Judas, you know. We even hate him for what he did to Jesus. And then there's John. We, we think John's a pretty good guy. He seemed like a really likable guy. But we all know and remember Peter. Through this three-year journey of following Jesus, Peter had, man, he was so human. He had his doubts. And then on certain days, his faith would be so big. But it seems like the higher you go, the harder you fall. The more you're all in, uh, the more you have to lose. And so any disciple like Peter, you know, if, you're, if you want to be a good follower of your rabbi, you, would want, you wouldn't want to just follow your rabbi. You would actually want to be like your rabbi. And to that degree... Peter failed time and time again. He was nothing like his rabbi. He failed time and time again, and so do we. So from the very beginning, three years prior, when Jesus uttered those words to Peter, follow me, Jesus is trying to create something in Peter. Peter didn't just start out as like this super evangelist, pastor-type guy who would go around boldly, courageously sharing the Word of God with others uh, and starting and sparking new growth in the Christian church 2,000 years ago. He didn't start out that way. Jesus, from the very beginning, would work step-by-step step with Peter to form in him the person he wanted him to be ministry, even for the time when Jesus would no longer be walking physically among them. He was preparing them for a time when he would no longer physically be with them. Jesus knew. Jesus knew how it was going to end. He knew Peter would betray him, deny him. He, he let Peter do it because of what it would create inside of him. It would make him the kind of minister that Jesus really needed him to be. One who knew the deepest depths of his grace, who knew the expansive expense of his love. There's a line in the video that we've just watched, and you might have missed it because it, it, it went kind of quickly, and the line was this, what would you do? Seriously, what would you do if you were in Peter's shoes? Imagine... I don't know, imagine for a moment that you're pulled over by police and these words are uttered. 
uh, they, these words are coming out of your mouth. You say, why, why no officer, I had no idea I was going that fast. What would you do? Yeah, in that situation, I'd probably deny my Lord as well. Because my initial gut reaction when my feet are held to the fire, my default position would be to save myself. Not sacrifice myself, but I, my default position would be to save myself. We, we look at what Peter did and we kind of, we, we can relate. We like Peter because Peter's us. Peter's just like us. He's the most relatable. What would you do? Peter was originally named Simon. People in the scriptures seem to get their names changed once in a while. Jesus changes Simon's name to Peter, which means rock. And thankfully, Jesus changes his name to rock before this all happened, before uh, Peter denies him three times. I'm not sure if it would have had the same effect. Peter the rock, the stone on which Jesus says he's going to build his church. Peter who says, Jesus, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. It's on this that Jesus says, people like Peter and his confession and, you know, tens and hundreds and thousands and millions of people after him that would confess Jesus as the Christ, the son of the living God. That's who he's going to build his church on. You know, if we relate to Peter, it's because we're like him. If we relate to Peter, it's because sometimes we're a little slow on the uptake as to what it actually means to be a follower of Jesus. If we relate to Peter, it's because occasionally we also speak or act before we stop and think and pray. You know, if we'd lie to get out of a speeding ticket, we would most certainly lie to ensure that we would stay out of jail or to avoid death. We relate to Peter because too often, how do we act? We act not out of deep love for others, but we all too often act out of fear, out of insecurity, out of selfishness, not really considering others before we consider ourselves, without really thinking or be, without really trusting fully the God who made us and wants us to do his will in the world. If we relate to Peter, it's because we are Peter. What does this say about the kind of church that Jesus is building? Maybe it says we don't need to be perfect. Maybe it says we don't need to have everything down pat. Maybe just, maybe it says that we understand that we are loved and that we can share that love because we have a forgiving Savior. We don't have to save ourselves. Jesus does that for us. We have such a forgiving Savior more than we could ever dream or comprehend. You each have the love, the forgiveness, the grace, and the acceptance of Jesus. Did you know that? No matter what. No conditions. You each have the love and grace and acceptance of Jesus, the complete and total forgiveness bought and paid in full through the precious blood of Christ for you and for me. So as we gather on this Good Friday 2021, I hope you realize this as part of the church. You are part of his church by faith, in what he's done for you. I hope you realize that the Christian church of which you're a part was never, I don't think it was ever really meant to have all the answers. I think church is more this. Church is sometimes one beggar letting another beggar know where the food is. It's a gathering, not just to talk about God as if he wasn't in the room with us, not just to talk about religious ideas, but it is to receive and live out God's gift of faithfulness to us. A gathering where God meets us with light in the darkness, a gathering where God meets us with hope in our hopeless situations. And God knows Peter was in a hopeless situation. Can you relate on this Good Friday? 
For one who had walked with Jesus for three years to this point, along with all those other disciples, what Peter experienced on and around Good Friday, well, it felt like a total disaster. Can you relate? It felt like the bottom was dropping out of his dreams. It felt like chaos was overtaking his life. It felt like things were out of control. And if words could somehow summarize what the disciples, especially Peter, was feeling in those moments, it would have been, Jesus, it feels like we lost. But this is Good Friday, and I want you to listen carefully, and I want you to watch closely to what Jesus is doing for you. Jesus is here for you, and it's why he came. He's not going to let go of you. He's not going to let go of you in the darkness, not now. For now, let's soak it all up, every single word, every single action. This Friday, this Good Friday, Jesus lays it all on the line for us. He paid it all with his love, with his life, and for our salvation. Hello, my name is Melissa, and I would like to share with you the sixth word from the cross. Jesus said, it is finished, John chapter 19, verses 30. The word of the Lord today is from Luke chapter 13, verse 31 to 35. At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, please leave this place and go elsewhere. Harold wants to kill you. He replied, go tell that fox, I will keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow and on the third day I'll reach my goal. In any case, I may press on today and tomorrow and the next day, for surely no prophet can die outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and the stone that was sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings and you were not willing. Look, your house is left you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you finished what you started. You completed the work you were sent to do. Thank you, Jesus. Enable us by your Holy Spirit to be faithful to your, to our call. Grant us strength to bear our crosses and endure our sufferings even unto death. Enable us to do the things that you have called us to do in this life, to share the love of Jesus with all. Hi, I'm Pastor Lee, and I'd like to share the seventh word of Jesus from the cross. Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Luke 23, 46. And a reading from John 14, verses 25 to 29. Jesus said, All this I have spoken while still, still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. Let's pray. Father, into whose hands your Son Jesus Christ commended his Spirit, grant that we too, following his example, may in all of life and at the moment of our death entrust our lives into your faithful hands of love, in the name of Jesus, who gave his life for us. Amen.
indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus made it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. הנה נטו משיחה, ברא דהלה. אני ענה. גודפה! גודפה!
Stop, Danny! Mashlam. 